What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Lance Corey. I'm Juan Arceo. And today I've got a 1993 FXR behind me. And I got a 2001 Dyna FXDX. And we are going to talk about all the ins and outs of these specific bikes, go take them on the road, and give you guys a real good comparison. So we have these cheat sheets. We are not the, I don't even know what the word is, aficionados, is that the word? You know, there's tons of facts about FXRs and Dynas, and there's tons of changes throughout the years. FXRs, there was times where they had shovel head engines in them. Dynas, you've seen them with 39 millimeter forks, 49 millimeter forks. Did they come with Evos too? Dynas came with Evos yeah. for a little bit. And twin cams. So there's tons of information on these bikes, but we're gonna specifically talk about the ones that are behind us, and we're gonna be comparing these two bikes. To me, they're the most sought after and similar in today's world. They're both about the same price range. These both have stock power plant engines in them with minor modifications, including like the pipe bars, risers. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna look at a bike that's in the five to $10,000 range, you're gonna consider both of these bikes. First off, the FXR. One of the biggest things you're gonna notice and the way to tell it's an FXR is you're gonna wanna look for the triangle on the back of the frame. This changes the way the bike rides and we'll get into that shortly but first we're gonna get into the stats so basically a 1993 fxr came with an evolution engine the evolution engine has a single cam in it that single cam runs the push rods which runs the valve train and tell us about the valve train on this bike so this bike right here the 01 it's a twin cam, a little bit different than that uh, FXR. It's got two cams operating the push rods that open and close the valves. So that's kind of the main difference in these engines between these bikes. And you're gonna notice that they sound different. These bikes actually have the exact same exhaust system on it, but when we take them out on the road, you're going to hear the difference of these drivetrains. The Evo, right out of the box, Harley claimed pushed out 47 horsepower and 86 torque. So I think that one is an 80 inch. This Your is motor. an 80 inch, yep, sorry. It yeah. doesn't have it on the stats, but what it does say is that this Evo was a 1338cc. Okay. What is the cc's on so that? So this is an 88 cubic inch. It's a 1449, so almost a 1500cc. Put it now, an estimated 67 horsepower and 78 foot pounds of torque. So as you can see, a little bit bigger displacement, but also a little more power, and in my opinion, a little more reliable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in terms of reliability, one thing we can say though, the FXR behind me, weighed 621 pounds dry. What did that one weigh? The dry weight on this one is 661, so it's got a little bit of a weight disadvantage, but uh, we're gonna see if you can feel that when we're out on the road riding it. Yeah, totally. And one thing to note, both of these bikes are carbureted. They both have been upgraded to a Makuni carburetor, which we like here. We like how easy they are to tune, and usually right out of the box, they run pretty dang well. Yeah, they've been pretty plug and play, haven't given us any issues, and I personally notice a pretty good increase and throttle response on these things so with yep. that Makuni. So it's kind of our go-to upgrade for uh, any of the older carbureted bikes. You are gonna notice the five-speed on the Dyna has been updated and it feels quite a bit better than the Evo okay. five-speed. We'll feel that when we're out on the road. Capacity, the Dyna's got almost five gallons, 4.9. What about the Let's FX see, bike? where's the capacity on this? 4.2 gallons of gas. So almost got another extra gallon, but it's also got the bigger motor, so I don't know if that's actually gonna translate to more range. All right, well, let's throw these down. I wanna go over here and, and, and talk about the triangle on the frame. Yep. So one of the things you're gonna notice in the FXR is that the triangle leads to where the transmission or the whole like engine connects to the frame and there's rubber engine mounts. And then as well as the swing arm comes off of this pivot back. So what that does is it really allows the swing arm to be connected to the frame and then the engine to be connected to the frame. And then what happens is later on, Harley Davidson ended up going to this design where on the Dyna, really the only thing the swing arm goes to is the transmission. You notice it's not bolted to the frame anywhere other than off of the swing arm, which is also rubber mounted and made to be kind of able to move. And that's where the Dyna wobble is kind of originated. You're gonna also notice something that Harley did. They really did like this FXR design and that same style frame is on the current FLH model bikes. So it's the same triangle. swing arm style. It's got the same triangle. To my understanding, Harley Davidson, that was a very costly frame and they were able to figure out how to manufacture a frame that was easier. And so later on in the years, they, they used this frame for the Dyna, but they kind of kept that same engineering on their FLH frame. But what that 
that does is that this engine is rubber mounted. It's rubber mounted basically to the rear wheel. And then if there's any shaking in the engine can happen in the wheel. Any shaking in the back wheel can happen in the engine. So we do see a lot of guys upgrade to different engine stabilization mounts for these bikes, but that's kind of the biggest complaint between the FXR and the Dyna. Because other than that, they both have 39 millimeter forks. They both have dual disc brakes. Uh, they really are very similar bikes, but that frame is the biggest difference, especially from a distance when you're looking at it. A well-sorted Dyna will definitely get rid of the Dyna wobbles. I mean, your two-faced bike rides smooth. You've done some stuff to it. So I don't think that should deter anybody from buying it. It's more like after, you know, they get neglected and have tons of miles and the motor mounts wear down and break away, then you start getting that Dyna wobble issue. But I think it's something that could easily be fixed, but it is something to keep in mind if you're picking up one of these bikes, you're most likely gonna want to at least change the motor mounts or go that way. I mean, I think that goes for both bikes, yes. right? That bike's 30 years old, this bike's 20 years old. The rubber motor mounts, if they haven't been done in the last five to 10 years, they they're probably bad on either bike. They should re be replaced. Yeah. And then like he said, there's many ways to combat both these bikes riding smoother for you. Depending on your riding style, your weight, suspension, front and rear play a big role. Yep. Tires play a big role. Engine mounts play a big role, as well as engine balance. Some engines can go out of balance depending on where the crank is set. That can play a big role. Both have the long fender. They both got dual disc. One Control. thing about the dual disc, the newer Dynas, this 2001 Dyna does have dual piston yep. brakes, front and rear, yep. where the FXR has single piston, front and rear. So you're getting updated brakes, yep. better stopping power on this bike. As you can see, 10 years later, Harley was able to manufacture yeah. you know, higher quality I wonder stuff. what the difference is gonna be when we're out on the road, I'm gonna pay attention to the brakes. So brakes is a big deal. Power is a big deal. Feeling how the bike tracks is a big deal with the engine stabilization. Feeling the difference of the Evolution engine versus the twin cam engine. Enough information on these bikes, enough looking at them, talking about them. I wanna drop them off the lift and I wanna go take them on the road. But you guys, stay tuned. We're gonna go take them for a rip. We're gonna go have some fun on them. And when we get back, we're gonna sit back down and actually talk about our experience and what these bikes felt like. All right, let's get rolling. Let's do this. That was pretty sick. That was rad, for sure. I think we did mess up. I wish the camera had mics listening to everything that we were talking about while we were riding. Because the conversations were good and when we flip-flopped the bike, they were really good. So we yeah. gotta try to tell them, especially you, like I feel like when you got off of the Dyna and you hopped on the FXR, you had the biggest reaction. So hold that reaction. Don't say it now. We just got off of these bikes. We had a blast. My favorite part had to have been ripping those S-turns and like flip-flopping bikes on those S-turns. Yeah, I think the road was like nice and paved and like the bikes are really grippy. We would have really like lean into the turns and stuff, get on the gas and it was it was rad for sure on both bikes. Even like dog fighting that. We're talking to each other on our comms, just coming into those corners and even watching each other's bikes a little bit, watching yeah. how they were tracking. It was just good times. But again, I started out on the FXR myself. Yep, and I started on the Dyna. Which was funny because at, on the FXR, first of all, the, the dash, the gauges are very analog. There's no computers, you know, there's actually a thing that spins the to show the miles. The cable sticking out of the back. So very old school, 30 years old. The bike kind of felt like I'm a little lower in it. Yep. They both have about the same height risers. They're like right around the seven or eight inch riser. And this one, the FXR I think has high bend bars and the Dyna has mid bend bars. So really they were about the same height, yeah. but the FXR you felt like you were in more. I felt like I was like in the frame a little bit more. And if you look at the frames, I do feel like the frame drops more on the FXR. Yeah, definitely the seat profile 
around where the triangle is, you kind of get in a little pocket. Yeah, so I felt like I was in the pocket. Now, that was the first bike I started on. And so, and everything felt good. The bike has very smooth power range, power to weight ratio feels fine. I was able to really feel comfortable in the corners. It was sticking, it was handling the corners yeah. well. I had a blast, but I noticed right off the bat, you were on the Dyna and you got on the throttle and you about, you walked away from me really easy. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. So it was interesting because riding each bike separately, they both feel fast, they feel peppy. You don't realize how you are in comparison to another bike. Totally. You're riding it, you're like, dude, throttle response is good on both bikes, they sound good. And then it was interesting to see how much faster the Dyna was because in my mind, they were both about the same, but no, like in reality, the Dyna's quite a bit faster. Totally. It was interesting to see that difference. And I have to say, okay, so I'm riding the FXR, I'm enjoying it. I love how the Evo feels. Yeah. I love how it sounds. And one one thing I have to say about both of these bikes, I love riding a cable throttle yeah. carbureted bike. Yep. Both of them, this one 20 years old, this one 30 years old. We ride bikes that are not even six months old. They have electronic throttle by wire. They have fuel injection, which don't get me wrong. They run great. They do ride good, but the sole that both of these had. Yeah, it's just so different when like you're twisting the throttle, it's pulling a cable, like you feel the mechanics of that and yep. it, the response. I mean, it's just instant. Totally. You know? That just translates into a different riding experience. And it, it's cool, both of these bikes do that. You're, you're definitely right with that. But I love the Evo, I love the way they are. Uh, I have a 111 Evo on my FXR and that thing is a beast. I really do love the Evo engine itself. The twin cam feels a little bit more relaxed. I feel like the stock cam in a twin cam is a little bit more subtle. Even though it is a faster bike, I feel like it doesn't feel as aggressive right away. Does that make sense to yeah, you? It, like you said, like I, we understand it's faster, but overall the FXR felt more aggressive. I, yeah, 100%. I think the twin cam, the power delivery is just a little more mellow. Exactly. We had different, a little bit different experience, right? Because you went from the older bike to the new bike and yeah. I went from the new bike to the old bike. And you got on the old bike. We did a flip flop after yeah. riding it for a half hour to an hour we do a flip-flop and then you get on the fxr and he's in my comms i'm like hey let's turn around let's start heading back and he was behind me and i hear whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so i was i hopped on the fxr and i started riding it the same way i rode the dyna pinned banging gears i see a turn all right you know i still got plenty of room i'm trying to keep up with lance and then i hit the brakes and i'm like <laughs> Hello? Is anybody in there? One of the biggest difference for me between the two bikes was just the brakes. And we had mentioned it earlier, they have a different style that has like a dual piston or and this one only has a single. And that was like off the bat, very noticeable for me where I was like, I literally thought I was gonna like T-bone Lance into the turn. He was like, oh, I thought he was crashing. He was like, oh, and I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, the brakes on this thing suck. I didn't really realize it because I got to go from lesser brakes to better yeah, brakes. Yeah, so. you started with that. So you were used to it where yeah. I was was used to the Dyna brakes and then I got on these and I was like, whoa, it was like, I was releasing parachutes or something. I was like, release the chutes. The one thing that I noticed when I got on the Dyna is I did feel like I was over the bike more. Overall, like not even like bar height. I just felt like my butt was higher up in the bike and I felt like my legs were higher off of the ground. Overall, when I was riding this Dyna, this one has been a shop Dyna and we did replace the engine mounts. It does have decent suspension, but we don't have any like engine stabilizers on it. It was tracking great. Yeah. I was dying driving it into the corners and we were going pretty good and never did I feel like it was doing this. I was happy with how this bike was handling in the canyons. Granted, we didn't take these things on a road trip on the highway with like loaded down bags. That's sometimes where you really start right. to feel the bikes walk like that. Overall, I think, you know, once you were going to like a casual pace and we were, I know I was dragging pegs on the FXR. What I did notice between the two bikes is the uh, FXR was scraping a little bit easier. I don't know if it was a uh, kickstand. It was on the kickstand. Was. Side yeah. that was able to so i think i think the kickstand spring is a little weak yeah yeah interesting yeah i i, I didn't scrape on the dyna but as soon as we got on the fxr and i kind of like dove into a turn i like it, it wasn't like a scrape where it picked you up like if you scrape a peg it was more like i heard the sound like i think that's another thing it leads me into that the kickstand on the fxr is a little bit in my opinion a little sketchier yeah i don't know it just like it doesn't come forward all the way and in my mind i like to see the kickstand go like well i mean 10 years later they you know got feedback from this and then pushed into this you know yeah. but one other thing that's a big feel like difference they're both five speeds but the five speed on the fxr the stock five speed has so much like no man's land when you shift up like there's like a like area emptiness yeah. and like
like when you shift down, there's like an area of emptiness. So on the newer five-speed transmissions, you go down, 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 and then you hear, you feel a stop. Yes. And you're like, I know I'm in first. And in the FXR, it kind of feels like you have squish. Yeah. You never know. Am I in between a gear or like they keep going down? Yep. So I, I also noticed that. Yeah. So the, the transmissions on the updated, you know, Dyna that is 10 years newer is much more tight feeling. Yeah. And, and the shifts feel more like responsive. Where on the FXR, you're a little bit more curious, like, did it go into that gear? <laughs> so that's another thing that I noticed on the immediate flip-flop. But overall, you know, they're both rad bikes. They're sweet to have in your garage. They're both probably in a similar price range. I would imagine, the bummer is we couldn't find the MSRP or yeah. the FXR, what they were. And I'm sorry guys, but we were like just born when this FXR came out. So I don't know what the MSRP on that bike exactly was. We did a lot of research and I couldn't really find a uh, like reliable source. I saw some numbers, but I did, I'm not too sure. There isn't a lot of literature on like MSRP in 92, 93. But if so. you know what the MSRP was, please comment below. Yeah, this is a 93 convertible. Yep. Um, so yeah, if you bought one or you know somebody who bought one back in 93, let us know what you guys paid for it. Yeah. Um, this one had an MSRP on it. Did you write it down? It was 13,800. 13, yeah. Which is kind of expensive, I thought, in 2001. So the thing is, is that bike probably still hovers right around that price, a little less. You might be able yeah. to find a good DX. Of course, depending on where you live in that, you know, I would say eight to $12,000 range. Yeah, I mean, you could find them cheaper, but they're pretty beat. I think if you get something between eight to 12, either at Dyna or FXR right now, you have a good starting point yeah. like, to build into something that you like. Yeah, totally. So, but again, I know that you won in my helmet, you were saying which one you would choose. And I think I'll say which one I would choose. Like yeah. if I could only have one of these specific bikes behind us in my garage and I wanted to be able to go on road trips with buddies and I wanted to be able to use it on the weekends ripping around town or use it as a commuter getting to work or whatever I want it for I definitely would put my trust a little bit more in this Dyna it is 10 years newer road great powerful I mean when we drag race thing took off it was it was noticeable that's my opinion the only thing about both of these bikes two decades old three decades old depending on which one you get you're gonna have to put some love into it hundred percent engine mounts tires brake pads brake fluid, change in the oils. Like either way, no matter what, I'm doing that if I get some old bike like this. Yeah. But Juan, what are you thinking? Dude? So, I mean, I agree 100%. The DX, it's it's a solid, easy choice, but I'm not gonna discredit the FXR. The FXR is freaking sick. It's got some classic styling that is, it's never gonna go out of style. The paint job's rad. The triangle frame is freaking cool. Like it's got some really cool features on it. I think if you're going for the nostalgia aspect, I could see choosing the FXR, but if you want, like like Lance says, something more reliable that you're gonna ride to work. You know, you're gonna mess around with some wheelies and stuff. The Dyna is, is a go-to choice, but I mean, the FX are so freaking rad and there's a lot of people that are buying it. The tins are sick and yeah. I think you just can't go wrong either way. It depends what you're totally. gonna do. No, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna get a bike and I wanna make it a hot rod and I want something to tinker on yep. and I want something that, that's definitely gonna turn heads, FXRs are pretty rad. And like you said, they are officially extinct. I mean, both of these are extinct. Yep. Dyna yep. and FXR, Harley no longer makes. But I think the FXR was a little bit more handmade yep. and welded back you know in the 80s and early 90s that's what harley davidson got away from something that maybe a computer could weld up the frame and stuff yeah. like that both rad bikes i'm super stoked that we got the opportunity to take these out and do that good times i hope this video gave you guys a little insight and a little detail on both the bikes behind us we had a blast sharing this experience with you guys yeah i mean if you guys have any of these bikes and you're like dude i have this and it's super sick let us know down in the comments below and uh, thanks for tuning in. See you later. Peace.